Um, have either of you two ever heard of Cassie Chadwick? No. I have not. No? Okay. Um, she so... looks like a babe. <laughs> oh, I hope she isn't like a massive racist. Yeah, I hope she's not evil or something. <laughs> um, Known serial so... killer Chas- Cassie Chadwick. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> She had a life. Um, so oh, no. <laughs> Cassie oh, Chadwick <laughs> was born Elizabeth Betsy Bigley in 1857 in Ontario. She was one of eight children. Um, in 1873, she ran away but was arrested for attempting to obtain a $250 promissory note from a wealthy local farmer. What's a Promis- promissory so, note? So, Promissory note, just basically a promise of money. So like a check. I didn't like a check. quite understand the full details, but she was att- essentially trying to scam this guy out of money. Right. Or trying to scam people into thinking that she had money. I mean, yeah, that, that looks a bit you like a check. That looks like a bit, mm. a bit like a check. Yeah. $250, also quite a lot of money. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say no to $250. I yeah. me neither. Yeah, so she ran away, but she was returned home by the police. In 1878, she was arrested uh, for an attempt to borrow money on a stolen pocket watch. Uh, okay, also- so so that the stolen pocket watch was like the deposit kind of thing for mm-hmm. borrowing like the money. Pawning. Right, yes. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also in 1878, she managed to acquire $10,000 in goods by using a fake identity and a forged check, um, mm. and then upon discovery, fled to Toronto. I mean, wow. so far, I'm still just like, babe, 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 babe. <laughs> well, what I'm hearing is she's a criminal. <laughs> Maybe both. What's the guy's name in Catch Me If You Can? The uh, Yeah, she's a bit of uh, one of those. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Great. Frank William Abagnale. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Regular old Abagnale. Yeah. <laughs> Um, In 1879, she was arrested in Woodstock, Ontario for attempting to use forged promissory notes um, using an assumed identity as an heiress to $15,000. She had a letter of introduction that she would show people. Amazing. I wouldn't say no Um. to 15 grand. (laughs) And then she was sent by her family to live with a married sister in Cleveland. (laughs) <laughs> um, this, is, this is what a sister looks uh, like uh, that's me, by the way. <laughs> but not married or in cleveland <laughs> neither of those things <laughs> not very long after moving in with her sister she moved out and set up shop as a clairvoyant using a kind of french sounding name yes. um a client that she madame met betsy bigley it was it was madame <laughs> Um, Madame something for sure. Anyway. Wow, um, great! Yeah. <laughs> Madame, <laughs> <Basically in both. laughs> it down. Um, there were so many names that she used. I didn't bother writing them all down. Um, <laughs> How can you keep up? Yeah. Uh, so she set up shop as a clairvoyant and got married to a doctor. Um, but pretty soon, when her photograph was published in the paper for her new um spouse her sister and her sister's husband plus a bunch of other local <laughs> tradespeople came knocking asking for money owed amongst other things she had taken out loans on all of her sister's furniture oh <laughs> which she obviously didn't pay back so oh, the, so furniture. the furniture got taken yeah. by yeah <laughs> no. not um, not so cool <laughs> husband uh husband promptly divorced her but also paid all of her debts so, oh oh you're not yeah. a bad guy then <laughs> yeah that's kind of him <laughs> some people get all the luck well, i don't know no, if dr was Annie pays all your like debts off a legal i don't i don't know you think mm-hmm. he might have like legally assumed responsibility for her debts by exactly. marrying her right exactly yeah, possibly um so she set up shop as a clairvoyant again, madam something else. Um, madam she got married Biggie. again. She got married again, but she made sure to get a prenup. And then for a few years later, she left him by approaching a local um, lawyer 
with a letter saying that she'd been adulterous and advising him to seek a divorce from the husband. Mm-hmm. Um, in 1889, she was sentenced to nine and a half years in prison for forgery. What is oh, this? Um, like what, she, is this what is this image, Rage? <laughs> it's a different iron, kind of iron forgery. forging. <laughs> it's for, forging. Oh, iron. <laughs> why is he naked? That doesn't seem like good really forge hot, safety. Jen. It's this really hot in there. It's extremely hot and sweaty in there. You just, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Don't judge. This is what you get from royalty fury image sites. <laughs> soft core porn. I know what you want from. Me. Do you know what? You actually you get an awful lot of soft core porn on those sites. <laughs> really? I haven't come across that yet. Yeah. yeah. You search for anything, even like with the remotest inkling that it might be something mm. like sexual, and you just get somebody's like soft core porn. That's really funny. Mm. Um, she did get out after a few years on parole, so she didn't spend the full nine and a half. In I don't know what it does, do they? No. In ni- 1893, she was released on parole and then promptly opened a brothel. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Um, wealthy man Leroy Chadwick. Wow. Uh, Hang on, that's her spending last name. time, <laughs> spending lo- time in the brothel. Um, she introduced herself to him as the owner of a respectable boarding house for women. Mm-hmm. He informed her that it was a brothel and a well known one. He informed her. <laughs> yep. She fainted she was so shocked that it was a brothel and asked him to immediately take her away from this place in case anybody thinks she's associated with it um <laughs> and then a few years later so her, then a few her years later they got married. <laughs> yeah then a few years later they got married so this is her th- third husband that is um, some, that is some acting that is some i i do want to see that movie <laughs> <laughs> give, give me that i think movie. i'm I'm pretty sure there is a movie. Actually. Excellent. Um, but this is really where her biggest con ever um, comes into play. On a trip to New York with her husband, uh, who by the uh, was a wealthy widower, um, she asked a friend of his, a lawyer, to drive her to the Carnegie residence, Andrew Carnegie's residence. Of um, Carnegie fame. Of Carnegie fame. She went inside and then came out and um, dropped a piece of paper. Uh, He picked it up for her and saw that it was a promissory note for $2 million from Andrew Carnegie himself. In fact, she'd just been to speak to the housekeeper. Um, But once... um, You can write anything on pieces of paper. (laughs) Once he had assured her that he would keep her secret, she tearfully told him that she was the illegitimate daughter of Andrew Carnegie and um, that he felt very guilty about this and was giving her a lot of money and she was set to receive a lot of money on his death. She told him she had about $7 million worth of promissory notes stashed around the place he quickly made sure that this stuff got you know put in safety deposit boxes in the bank and news quickly spread um seven million in the 1800s yeah so this news spread like wildfire because obviously andrew carnegie at one point the richest man in the world um his name was good for anything right uh, so she was getting loans left, right, and centre because she was an heiress to Andrew Carnegie. Um, for several years, she was. Uh, I just, I'm just getting the feeling that just like this kind of like the, the kind of like system that everything kind of runs on is just kind of like fake <laughs> and kind of stupid, <laughs> kind of yeah. fake and stupid. I mean, that, that is, um, and no wonder that, uh, people that is the case kind of. Do stuff like this because it's all fake and stupid. It's all fake and not real. Yeah. Yeah. It's about trust and nothing else. Right. And people have an incentive to trust each other even when they know the whole system is corrupt. Yeah. But yeah, she lived like a queen for several years. She bought um, 
30 closets worth of clothes or something like wow. that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what they say. That's too many clothes. Um, lots of jewellery and such like. All sorts when of I get new clothes, stuff. I wear them to death. <laughs> can do that with 30 million pounds worth of clothes. <laughs> In all, I think she received about $2 million worth of loans. So that's $2 million then, almost $70 million now. Wow. Um, so plenty. Um, but she she received a loan of $190,000 um, from a gentleman who then re- um, learned of all of the other loans that he ha- she had and got a bit nervous about it, tried to with, like call his loan in, couldn't call his loan in. And um, and uh, the jig was up, basically. It triggered a run on the bank. <laughs> there was indeed a run on a bank. One bank did oh. become bankrupt. Wow, um, just because of her? Yeah. Oh my yes, God, because they her. loaned her so much money. Yeah, a bank That's brilliant. became... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they'd loaned her so much money and because everybody else was pulling their money out of it because it was big news very quickly. Oh my God. <laughs> Obviously, the Carnegie heiress. Wow. Yeah. Um, One yeah, woman I mean, wrecker of financial institutions. Yeah. I love it. And then she was sentenced to 14 years in prison. Um, she spent a few of them in there before passing away at the age of 50. Um, one of the greatest con artists that's ever lived, uh, but obviously not the biggest con artist. Um, which is capitalism. <laughs> is Long guy? story short, <laughs> the biggest con artist is capitalism. Carnegie. Ah, uh, uh, yes, true. Famous yes, for Carnegie. The actual Carnegie land. is is yeah. a much bigger, uh, yeah. more brutal he, con artist. He was reportedly very pleased about this whole thing because obviously this whole scam relied on the fact that nobody was going to go straight up to him and like ask him about his illegitimate daughter. Nobody was going to do that. But at the same time, he's, you know, good for the money. Yeah. Um, Yeah. uh, Yeah. The whole the whole thing is evidence of just how impressive just his name is Mm. that someone else can run around making like spending tons and tons and tons of other people's money just by pretending to be associated with him (laughs) yeah that's my that's my goal in life to get to that level (laughs) (laughs) so he didn't find out basically until the until the news broke but he was quite pleased with the fact that his name was that important and he um he turned up at the trial, I think, just to see who had successfully tricked everybody into thinking that she was his <laughs> daughter for so many years. Um, that is pretty yeah, funny. Uh, her hus- uh, when she was arrested, uh, she was wearing a belt uh, holding $100,000. <laughs> oh! Which, again, in today's money, is about 34 times that amount. Oh, wow. shit! 3.4 million or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, wow that's too many monies <laughs> too many monies mm. her husband her third husband third and final did um immediately divorce her and then run away to europe with his um adult daughter uh, <laughs> upon finding out didn't want to be associated anymore with right. mrs chadwick <laughs> Well, I was I was thinking like you just don't get con artists like that anymore. But then I remembered like that that medical technology woman. Yes, yes, what her name yes, was. yes. Uh, Theranos. Um, yeah. Holmes, is it? Emma yeah, something like that. And like, and she would just like wear Steve Jobs style turtlenecks and just like look really intense. Like yeah. And she she started her company at nineteen when she had mm. literally no product. Um, yeah, <laughs> started I like saw- taking, literally taking people's, like faking real people's real blood test results. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I, I saw like, there was like a Reddit post from a couple of years ago, which was like, um, from like legal advice or something. And it was like, um, oh, I'm a researcher at this, uh, a biomedical company and, um, 
all of their stuff is faked. You know, what liability do I have, etc., etc., etc. And um, then, like, two or three years later, that same poster, like, posted it. I was this person. I worked for Feranos. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Because they were all under really, like, tight un- NDAs. The mm. company ran, like, a cult. They were all under constant surveillance. They had serious security. Like, um, I, 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 it's Elizabeth Holmes was That's it. her name. There's, there's like, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's an incredible show called The Dropout with Amanda Siegfried playing uh, Elizabeth Holmes in it. And it's really good. <laughs> it's a really good show. That'd be a good, it'd be a good presentation, wouldn't it? Ah. Oh. Oh, okay. Maybe next time. <laughs> I, I, actually, I, I want to ask a question. Of the three of us, people mm-hmm. at home in the comments, which one of us would you want to scam more? I thought Wait. you were going to ask which one of us is most gullible. <laughs> well, that's what I, mean, I was that going to say. That's kind of what well. I did ask. <laughs> but that is kind of the question, isn't it, really? It's like, which which one's most likely to fall for it? Mm. Mm. Serious. Mm. Wow. Personal question. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get the engagement up. Trying to get the engagement up. comments. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to be gullible. Oh well, the thing is. So, did you hear that? Um, so, it's is it they Oxford English Dictionary has taken gullible out of the dictionary. Stop. Yeah, Jen. Okay. Stop, Jen. Okay, Jen. 